how's it going? All right, so um, this time oh, I've got myself a, uh, a Sega Saturn controller here that um, I just picked up from one of the local auction sites and um, well, I thought what I'd do a video on is just giving these things a bit of a clean up and um, I'm going to show you a few tips hopefully that you'll be able to apply to any of your controllers and um, I found that you know when you when you buy these off the auction sites or well, when you get them from anywhere they used you don't don't really know what sort of history they had or what the contacts really like on the buttons anymore so yeah I figured well pretty much any one of these I get I give these a clean up and I know this has probably been covered heaps but you know I thought well you never know I might be able to shed some new light on it so all right so first thing we want to do is just basically get our controller apart and as you're doing it of course try and take note of where everything went um, because as can happen with these um, buttons and bits and pieces go flying everywhere when you pull them apart so just take it easy and um, yeah we'll get into it okay so for the Sega Saturn controllers um, they just need a Phillips screwdriver um, but you know some controllers need um, well you got torque screwdrivers um, some of them need game bits um, I think some of the Nintendo ones need tri wings is it so just have a look first and see what you're going to be in for and um, just get the screws out of this also just something to note about the um, the screws in these is um, sometimes with controllers certain screws go in certain places like the different lengths or a different thread so just try and take note as you're pulling them apart as to where they'll go as well Okay, so now I've got our, um, our back plate off. Just carefully put the screws to one side. And what we'll do is we'll just gently lift out the circuit board. So once you've got this apart, just have a bit of a look at the solder joints, make sure they're all still in reasonably good sort of condition. Could be an opportunity to give them a bit of a tweak. If your controller has any form of capacitor or anything in it, also check that out, make sure it's looking healthy, there's no goo leaking out of it. And um, the thing we're going to be looking at today is just giving these um, contacts a quick clean. And looking at these, they're actually not too bad at all. I would say this controller has been sitting around a long time but hasn't been used a lot. Right now I'm going to see if I can show you something here. Okay, if you look at these pads you see how they've got a bit of a shine to them? Now normally when you're giving something a bit of a clean up, um, once you get it nice and shiny you know it's clean and it's good to go. But with these pads, it's actually the complete opposite. If they're shiny, they're no good. What they need to have is um, quite a matte finish. You see how these ones don't really reflect? That's how they should be. Um, any shininess like that is basically a build-up of materials and it's going to cause it to, um, well, not to conduct very well. So what we need to do is actually give these a bit of a gentle clean and uh, make it so that they've got a nice dull sort of finish to them instead of this shininess that you can see. But before we get into that, now I've got my housing apart, I'm just going to very carefully lift everything out. Okay, and now I've got the, um, the, the bare housing. This here as well. With these, you just got to pop the little panel off and then D pad will drop out. Okay, so now I've got my bare housing. What I'm going to do is go and chuck these in the sink and give them a quick scrub up. Now, um, make sure that you don't put these in boiling water, just some nice warm water, and just go over them just give them a general sort of a wash and then um, make sure you dry them thoroughly. And what I like to do as well is if you've got a little scrubbing brush or a toothbrush is actually really good. Just in these little grooves along here, just give them a quick scrub in there as well just to get any 
you know, any dirt or any materials that are built up in there because they like to get trapped in those sort of wee gaps like that. So, right, we'll go give this a wash. Okay, so we've just got some warm water here. So we just put these in. And basically just dart along and just try and get into any of the um, any of the little gaps in that and just get any excess dirt and whatnot out. Pay particular attention along these edges. I find um, any um, grease and dirt and that from people's hands tends to get trapped in those sort of areas. And just get any excess dust in that out. You don't have to get too carried away. But that probably depends on what the control is like. Okay, so now I've given the, um, the shell a bit of a wash. I'm just gonna go through just with the, um, the plastic buttons and that, D-pad, and just give them a quick scrub as well. Okay, so I think uh, that ought to do it. Everything should be uh, nice and clean. So we'll, um, what you need to do once you've washed all these components is very carefully dry them or leave them somewhere kind of warm um, to dry because you do not want to put this back together if there's any moisture left in it. So, I don't know, go play a game or something, kill some time and um, yeah, once it's all dry, we'll move on to the next bit. Okay, so for um, parts like your D-pad, um, which are basically going to be rolling um, plastic on plastic, I like to put just a little bit of grease on them and um, also especially good for the likes of your N64 controller as well um, with the analog stick. Putting a little bit of grease in it doesn't hurt either. Now the grease I use is this um, it's a, off a Tamiya cars, a little, you know, the RC cars. There's you, this um, ceramic grease that you can get and this is really good to use um, for this sort of stuff but you do have to be very careful with it that you don't um, get any of this on any electronics or any circuit boards or anything because it's not really very good for them. So when you're using this, um, the key to it, well, what I try and always do is a really, really little bit goes a very long way, okay? So just use it very, very sparingly. Don't go put tons on there. It doesn't really need much at all, but I like to um, just put just a real tiny little bit on there. Um, what I'll do is I usually just rub that around with my finger a little bit. Doesn't need much at all. Just stops the um, plastic getting worn away. But um, to be honest, the um, control will be probably fairly well worn out by the time that happens anyway, but still. So just a very, very light coating. Because it has quite a long sort of a life, this grease. So just a very little bit in there and this little piece here is also going to be rubbing up against some plastic, so I'll just put a very little dog on there. So you can just sort of, that's probably actually almost too much. Just a very light coating. Okay. Okay, so the next thing we need to look at addressing is just our contacts. Um, and what I'm going to do is I actually use for these, I actually use contact cleaner. Um, this is a CRC product, Precision CO contact cleaner. Now the thing with this stuff is that it evaporates on its own and I am aware that this isn't available in all countries um, but you will have an equivalent. Now when you're shopping for contact cleaner, um, especially for this sort of use, um, the thing to be careful of is to make sure it has written on the can somewhere, anywhere, that it's safe for use on plastics. Um, because there's, in New Zealand here we get this Precision Contact Cleaner, there's another product that's got a very similar name, made by the same company, um, which is ElectroClean, um, and they actually make another one as well I think, but um, those products aren't safe for use on plastic at all, and if you put this anywhere near any, anything that's plastic or rubbery, so this sort of stuff, um, it dissolves it. <laughs> or it makes it, yeah, it just makes a mess of it. So just be very, very careful. The other thing you could probably do use is some isopropylene. Um, because just, you just want something that evaporates. It's gonna clean it off and actually evaporate afterwards and not be harsh on any of these. The other thing you'll need, of course, is some, uh, we call them cotton buds. I think they're called Q-tips or these, basically. Get some of these as well. So we get you zoomed in and uh, we'll just give this a quick scrub up. Okay, so 
got my spray here and I'm just going to wet the end of it basically and then just gently give these contacts a bit of a rub here. And you see by the end of my tip here that, um, yeah, it wasn't that good. And just showing you the difference, you can see the one down here that I started working on, how it's got that nice sort of matte finish now, and that means it's going to make good contact. So I've just got to work along, get one, that one just a little bit better, and then, uh, yeah, clean these other ones up. Alright, so you can see the um, the shine is pretty much gone out of them. So um, yeah, just about good to go. Um, I'll just quickly work along and give these just a quick once over. These are actually pretty good, but I'll give them a quick wipe anyway. And um, yeah, almost done. Okay, so next up, um, what I'm going to do is just basically give these contacts a quick wipe as well. So I'm just going to get a little bit more liberal with my spray here. And just give them a quick once over. As you can see, the spray evaporates pretty quickly. Okay, so yeah, I'll just uh, race along, clip this all back together. Okay, so that's our control all back together, all clean and service. And um, yeah, I suppose the only other thing left to do now is um, go and give it a bit of a test. But um, as always guys, thanks very much for watching. I, I hope uh, this has been helpful to you and um, always enjoy hearing your comments. So please feel free to ask any questions or anything you want to know down below. And um, yeah, as always guys, I, I guess we'll see you again real soon.